maintain a fruitful partnership with churches that take a different stance on women in ministry. For 44 years, we have continued our partnership with this convention, engaging in kingdom work while having females as pastor. <laughs> Welcome to Barry and Babs. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin the Southern Baptist Convention. Okay, so the Southern Baptist Convention had their convention. Um, so what has transpired this time around? Well, there's so much stuff that has been going on. So at the Southern Baptist, they do believe they hold uh, firm to the scriptures. They have differences within, uh, within the convention, but none of them, they are kind of like secondary issues, right? So you have people who, who are covenants in there, you have non covenants But all of them, they do agree one thing, that no, women do not belong on the pulpit. <laughs> they don't believe that. But as you know, women preaching, becoming teachers has taken storm all over the churches. The Methodists, they just had to disband because they opened the doors for uh, female preachers. Now they are full uh, rainbow, okay? They are full rainbow. So the SBC, they are trying to hold the line because one thing that has remained true throughout history, once you open the door, for a woman pastor, for women pastors, it is a downhill. The next minute, you're going to be waving the flag, okay, the rainbow flag, and that's it. There's just That's how it works. So all the churches that have gone to become full-blown rainbow, that's how they started. So SBC is not special. So as I'm speaking to you, okay, there are 2,000 churches. <laughs> Within the Southern Baptist Convention, okay, 1800, those are the ones they could see and confirm, okay, that are in good standing order with the Southern Baptist Convention, okay? So in order for your church to be in good standing with the Southern Baptist Convention, you need to adhere to Southern Baptist Faith and Message 2000, okay? So this is, uh, for those who might not know, it's kind of like um, something that serves like a confession, as such, okay, so you adhere to these. It's like a contract that you have, so to speak, right? So this is the confession that you're going to attach yourself like, okay, we want to be a Southern Baptist Convention. Okay, so what do Southern Baptist Convention believe? These are the things that I believe. So you sign up for that issue, then yeah, you're welcome, right? You send in um, uh, your donation, which is a cooperative program. So that's the money that's used to send out missionaries. They actually do good work as well as uh, you get a discount to you to go to their seminaries. So they do a very good work. So right now, we're just trying, okay, we need to hold the line. Do not let these women come in, okay? So, all right, I hope I've, I've given you guys up to speed. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat, okay? So this year, what was happening? Last year, they voted overwhelmingly that they did not want women pastors. <laughs> so the vote was, uh, if I remember correctly, almost 90%. So they voted that they didn't want women pastors. But in order for them to change their constitution, right, they wanted to make sure that it reads that Southern Baptist Convention, uh, the office of the pastor, bishop, and overseer is only exclusive to men. Why? Because there are churches within the denomination who do have women as pastors. And these churches have come forward to say that, uh, they're not pastors. They're just like a title, okay? So you tell, <laughs> we're going to get into it, guys, okay? So they're, they're just, it's just a title. It doesn't mean anything. But that's not actually true. Some of them, it might be true, but that's not the fight. That's not why these people are having. They actually do have women pastors who are mounting the pulpit on Sunday and preaching and teaching to a mixed audience, okay? So as a result of that, so... They say any church that does that is going to be excommunicated. <laughs> so, so last year they excommunicated uh, three churches, okay? And they have 2,000 two, two churches, but you know what I mean? Some churches, they have to go as a sacrificial lamb. So one of the bigger churches that they had to kick out because they had no choice was Rick Warren's church, Saddleback Church. Not only does Saddleback Church have women pastors, but they also have the Rainbow Squad within their congregation. Not only that, the guy who took over from uh, Rick Warren and the word, 
he does ask it like he doesn't know he believes that um the rainbow weddings are actually the weddings and he has these people at his church and he just cancel them like you know it's not good it's, and he says oh but god hates divorce i'm like wait a minute if you have your pastor and he's telling you god hates divorce when rainbow people are married <laughs> That's a problem. You should just leave at that point. But anyway, just to tell you, these are the things. So I have all those videos already in my channel, okay? So today we're going to go to the convention. That way you can see these people with their own mouth that, yes, they do have uh, women pastors, okay? So let's take a look at uh, this video. The guy speaking is actually a pastor himself, <laughs> So here we go, guys. Uh, this was a gentleman who made a motion just to talk about why women cannot be pastors. Thank you, Mr. President. For the sake of clarity, the Credentials Committee wants to emphasize that our opinion was formed using the current language of the Baptist Faith and Message 2000 and the current language of Article 3 of the Constitution, which can be found on pages 163 through 164 and page 204 of the Book of Reports. Article 3 states the church will only be deemed in friendly cooperation with the convention which has a quote, faith and practice which closely identifies with the convention's adopted statement of faith, end quote. The Baptist Faith and Message, Article 6, states that while both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor, elder, overseer is limited to men as qualified by scripture. Under SBC Bylaw 8, the Credentials Committee has inquired of First Baptist Alexandria regarding its beliefs and the church expressed to the Credentials Committee an egalitarian view regarding the role of women in, church, in the church, which is contrary to the complementarian beliefs provided in the Baptist Faith and Message, Article 6. We asked the church directly to explain their beliefs regarding the office of pastor, elder, overseer. The church responded saying they believe, quote, both men and women can satisfy the requirements of the pastor, elder, overseer office, end quote, and more specifically that they believe a woman is, quote, biblically qualified to fill the senior pastor position, end quote. We asked if the church might consider calling a woman as their lead senior pastor. The church responded affirmatively, saying yes, they would, because they do not, quote, believe that the Bible limits the fulfillment of this office exclusively to men. Article 3 requires that a church have both a faith and a practice that closely identifies with our convention's adopted statement of faith. And while the church, church practice of the church may closely identify to some, their publicly stated faith does not, and it must be both. Article 4 of the Constitution provides that the convention will never claim to have any authority over any church. Each autonomous church determines for itself what it believes and with whom it will cooperate. Likewise, the Southern Baptist Convention, autonomous in its own sphere, may determine for itself what it believes and the churches with which it will cooperate. We find no joy in making this recommendation, but have formed the opinion that the church's egalitarian beliefs regarding the office of pastor do not closely identify with the convention's adopted statement of faith. Therefore, we recommend that the Southern Baptist Convention discontinue its cooperative relationship with, the, with First Baptist Church, Alexandria, Virginia, on the basis that the church has a stated faith which does not closely identify with the convention's adopted statement of faith as, it, as currently required by Article 3 of the Constitution. Robert Stevens, I'm the senior pastor and messenger of First Baptist Church of Alexandria. The role of women in ministry at First Alexandria is not a recent development. It's not a cultural concession or a change to accommodate or sacrifice biblical authority. In 1980, we ordained our first female pastor. And since then, we have ordained two other females to the work of the gospel ministry as late as 2008. Women have had a prominent role within the ministry and pastoral positions within the leadership of First Alexandria for over 44 years. First Alexandria stands before you today as a testament that we can maintain a fruitful partnership with churches that take a different stance on women in ministry. For 44 years, we have continued our partnership with this convention, engaging in kingdom work while having females as pastor. Our presence clearly demonstrates our shared commitment to prioritizing cooperation for the work of the kingdom and the glory of God, which has been successful. At First Alexandria, our mission is clear. 
It's all about the gospel. We are unwavering in our efforts to guide people to Jesus and envisioning a future where individuals from every nation, tribe, and language stand before the throne of God. For nearly 180 years, we have been able to do this together. We are at a time in human history when the opportunity is at hand for us to make great strides in fulfilling the commission of the Lord Jesus. Let's keep working together. We at First Baptist are advancing the gospel, and we hope that we will continue to work alongside you. All glory and honor unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. So to be honest with you, I actually do agree with him. Like, okay, why are they kicking him? There are other uh, 1,800 churches, okay, that do have uh, women pastors. So this is not just people are making up. Like, I'm telling you, it will just drive you nuts, okay? They are planting churches, knowing full well that uh, there's a female pastor, okay? They call him Mr. and Mrs. So this is what they're doing, okay? So this, um, the Alexandria Church was just a, a sacrifice, okay? So I'm going to show you guys it's going to make sense uh, in, a, uh, in a little bit, okay? So once I do that, then we're going to get uh, onto the chats. But welcome, guys. So now what we have is this pastor telling us this is a church in Alexandria that was kicked out, okay? Why? Because they have ordained a female pastor. OK, so like I shared with you guys last year, they voted that they want to make sure that they change in their doctrine. It will actually specifically says that this office can only be a man. They already have it in Baptist Faith and Message 2000. Right. An office, a bishop must be, you know, all the qualifications that we have in Titus 1 and 1 Timothy uh, 3. So this year, they were voting the same issue to make sure that they solidify, they put it in writing. But be as it may, even if they change that or they don't change that, if you, uh, if you have female pastors, you can be kicked out uh, of, the, uh, of the convention, right? But it has to be done at the convention. So that was the pastor from Alexandria Church, okay? This was uh, uh, big news, including what you call national news okay so so listen how they are filming this whole uh whole situation okay so here we go this church is being kicked out of the southern baptist convention because it has a woman pastor the sbc is the nation's largest protestant denomination in a vote at the national conference tuesday first baptist church of alexandria was expelled northern virginia bureau chief julie carey has reaction First Baptist Church on King Street making national headlines Tuesday as the Southern Baptist Convention delegates voted to expel the Alexandria Church. The SBC pointing to this statement of faith adopted in 2000. While both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor is limited to men as qualified by scripture. But for 20 years, Kim Eskridge, seen here on the First Baptist website, has worked as a pastor there, most recently ministering to women and children. The First Baptist senior pastor making an impassioned plea to allow her to continue, saying in part, for 44 years we continued our partnership with this convention, engaging in kingdom work while having females as pastor. Our presence clearly demonstrates our shared commitment to prioritizing cooperation for the work of the kingdom and the glory of God, which has been successful. Reverend Robin Anderson was one of the first female Baptist pastors in Virginia when she was ordained in 2001. She helps lead Commonwealth Baptist in Alexandria, which is not part of the Southern Baptist Convention. She believes the SBC's decision violates a fundamental premise of the Baptist faith. One of our founding principles of the Baptist Church is autonomy. Um, which means that we believe that the Holy Spirit can work through anyone. We also believe in church autonomy. She says the SBC vote saddens her, in part because of the message it sends to girls. Think about all of the girls that are growing up in those churches, that will grow up in those churches, and will never see someone that looks like them leading. Um, will be told if they feel that they are called to ministry, that they are mishearing God. Anderson has sent an email of support to Pastor Eskridge at First Baptist, but even Anderson has encountered disapproval and pushback in her career. I've gotten my own share of hate mail over the years. Um, I still have people that'll call the church and they'll hang up when they ask who's the pastor, and I say, this is she, they'll hang up. News 4 spoke to a First Baptist staffer seeking comment. She says the pastor there will be <clears throat> releasing a video statement sometime today.
So as you can see, this woman, she's actually a pastor. And her concern is uh, the young girls. Well, the Bible says the male headship is what the Bible clearly teaches that men are the ones, qualified men, right? Are the ones who are supposed to be elders. So are we going to be listening to what the girls want or are we going to be listening to the scriptures? Okay. So when God put this in order, you, you mean to tell me God wasn't thinking about the little girls? Huh? Wasn't thinking about the little girls? And not only that, it's not about you being gifted. Okay. You don't get to do anything that you're gifted in. So, in fact, it's not about you being gifted, right? This is, this is how God has designed the church to run, okay? I want men to do this. I want women to do this. These women are acting like there's nothing else that you can do for the kingdom. But you have to be, uh, uh, you have to mount the pulpit. So all the women who are preaching and teaching to men, they are in violation of the scripture. They are in disobedience. That's what the scripture teaches. So we either going to believe the scriptures or we don't. So clearly this woman should not, <laughs> does not belong in the scripture because she cares more about the feelings. Eh? And then the pastor over there who actually went to speak to a conversion. <laughs> that is, we've had this woman pastor for 44 years. Why are you guys kicking us out now? So Rebecca, to answer your question, okay? Uh, now they have all the... So yes, the SBC churches, they are an autonomous church, okay? Meaning they can choose to be part of the convention. They can choose to leave. So if you agree to be part of the convention, that's what it requires, okay? No female pastors. Unfortunately, the people at the top within the, the Southern Baptist Convention, they are aware that they are women pastors, but they just look what? The other way. You see what I'm saying? So this feminism has infected everything else. However, the majority of people who are just pure sitters, they do not support this. They do believe men have their roles, women have their roles. But in order for you to have your voice heard, you need to go to the convention. That way you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to vote. You see what I'm saying? Just like right now. Okay. If you don't like what's happening in your school district, okay, what are you doing about it, right? So you need to get involved. That's how uh, things happen. But most of the time, people just kick back. You trust the people at the top. And hey, this is, uh, this is what's happening. The fact that this church has survived for the four years, for that long, like what, what's going on? <laughs> so it's not like they did. No, they knew. So every now and then they will sacrifice. <laughs> they will sacrifice a church here and there. So when they, they take care of all these businesses during their convention, they have the convention Every year, once a year uh, during summertime. So this time around, it was in Indiana where they were supposed to vote and get two-thirds majority in order to put it in writing in their constitution. They already have it, but now they just wanted to add in words. Huh? Like, you know, like how we say like uh, a female woman. You, we don't even have to add female, you know what I mean? A female woman, right? A female, that's enough. But we know these days, right? You have to... You have to add in something just to make sure that, okay, we are talking about female, female, female here, right? Like a biological, a biological female, a biological <laughs> woman, things of that nature. Anyway, so this was what transpired on the floor where you have uh, pastors coming in saying, we don't need to change anything. And then another guy will say, no, we need to change. So the law was called, the gentleman who did this, his name is a pastor out in Virginia. His name is uh, Pastor Mike. He was actually the one who actually went to all these churches himself. And then he was uphold to find out, like, wait a minute, just within this area, uh, he calculated, what, over 26 good standing Southern Baptist churches that had uh, female pastors. So he was on the convention floor bringing this, uh, this case to bear, right? So people would be able to know exactly what's happening, Okay. So this is uh, what he said on the floor, okay? So uh, uh, take a listen to how everything transpired on the floor, okay? So then I'm going to explain it to you guys afterwards, okay? Here we go. In Charlotte, North Carolina. The question before us today is not whether or not we're complementarian. That's clear. The question is not do we believe the Bible. That's also clear. We are complementarian. We believe the Scripture. The question is, is this amendment necessary for our convention to respond when churches in our convention act in a way contrary to our complementarian doctrine? 
We showed last year we have an effective mechanism. It allows us to act with convention, conviction excuse me, and unity when it comes to this issue. Last year, we removed two different churches, one really big, like a mega, mega church, one normative size. This year, we removed an institutional legacy church. Y'all, we have shown that the mechanisms we currently have are sufficient to deal with this question. Listen, the last thing I wanna say is, I believe that we need to act in unity as a convention. The other three amendments that we made, we made by raised ballot, and it was an overwhelmingly majority referendum on this issue. So I wanna risk something, if you will, to my fellow brothers and sisters, because this has been weighing on me a whole lot. Would you be willing, if this goes to a written ballot, to see that as our message, that we're not unified when it comes to this issue? If we all raise overwhelming majority, let it be so. But if not, if this goes to a written ballot, maybe that's our signal that we are not unified as Southern Baptists, and why would we go forward with something that we are not unified in? I love that we are unified in the Great Commission. We are unified in our biblical convictions. Let us go forward in those and vote down this amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, also at microphone 10A, but this time to speak in, for, in favor of the amendment. Please state your name, your church, and your argument. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is... Okay, so what's happening right now, the gentleman who just spoke, he is trying to lead the convention that we don't need to change anything in our constitution because everything, whatever we have, has been working and it's working fine. So he's telling the people over there, like you go on the, uh, on the microphone to say that. So his position is, let's not add anything, let's not change anything, let's just leave everything the way it is, right? But as we can see over here, everything has been the way it is. Hence, we have a woman who has been a preacher for 44 years. We have over uh, eighteen over 1,800 churches who have women pastors. These are the ones that people are able to find out. <clears throat> what about the ones that we don't? So the gentleman who is about to speak right now is the one who put forward this amendment like, no, guys, we need to change our constitution to make it clear that we don't want no women pastors, okay? Because there are churches out here who have women pastors and they're saying like, yes, we're just using, we're just using the term as a title. So their case was like, no, anybody who has this, you cannot just use this term as, as a cover-up. It can only be used exclusively to a pastor, a bishop, an elder who, who is supposed to be a man in the church. Whatever titles you want to give to your children's ministry, you do that whatever you want to do, right? But we want to make sure that, you know, we clean up on this aisle. So this guy is about to start to speak to that effect, okay? Then uh, we'll talk more on the other side. We continue. This is Mike Law, and I'm a messenger from Arlington Baptist Church. I rise to support this motion because it is faithful to God's inerrant word. Southern Baptists love the Bible and long to be faithful to the Bible. In 1987, there were 18 women serving as pastors in the Southern Baptist churches. Last year, we learned there were over 1,800. This is a problem. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 12 to 14, the all-wise God says that a woman ought not teach or exercise authority over a man, terms associated with a pastoral office. Our culture may see this prohibition as harsh, but our God is all-wise, and he wrote his word for the flourishing of both men and women. Our Baptist faith and message agrees. While both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor, elder, overseer is limited to men as qualified by scripture. Let's be exceptionally clear. We gladly celebrate the myriads of women who serve the church in many essential ways. We are so grateful for these godly sisters. This amendment is not about women in ministry. It's specifically about women in the pastoral office. Last year, we rightly stood on the truth of scripture and adopted this amendment. Many things have changed since last year, but one thing has not changed. God's word remains the same. The Bible still teaches that the office of pastor is reserved for qualified men. Other denominations have failed here. Even this year, we have seen the United Methodists collapse into unbiblical chaos. Brothers and sisters, for the glory of God, we must side with scripture. Last year, we voted for biblical faithfulness. Yesterday, we voted for biblical faithfulness. Today, let us vote for biblical faithfulness. Tomorrow and every day, let us vote for biblical faithfulness until we hand this convention over to the next generation to vote for biblical faithfulness. This amendment is faithful to scripture. This amendment makes clear that the pastoral office is reserved for biblically qualified men. 
This amendment announces our unity in God's word to build churches according to God's design. In conclusion, I encourage you to vote yes for this amendment, to adopt this amendment, and stand with the unchanging word of our good and wise God. And I move the previous question. Okay, so that gentleman who was speaking, that's Mike Lowe, the one who proposed this amendment, okay? To change exactly whatever he said, right? Clear and concise, holding on to the scriptures with no question about it. So they uh, ended up putting this uh, vote to the floor, okay? In order for that vote to be successful, Okay, they needed to have a two-thirds majority, okay? So a simple majority is not going to work. So last time they had 90%, which was fine. So in order for them to change the constitution, you need to have that vote uh, twice in a row. So like for two years straight. So they had it uh, last year and then this year, okay? So if this year it passes... Then it changes. If it doesn't, and that's it. They have to start all over. Okay? So here are the results of how they voted. Okay? So here we go, and then I'll make a commentary on the other side. This is a result regarding the law amendment. We had 10,941 messengers who had registered at the time. Voting, we had 8,298 who voted for this, regarding this amendment. Those who voted in favor, there was 5,099 votes. That represented 61%.45. There was 3,000, let me finish please. There was 3,185 votes against, which represented 38.38%. There was 14 disallowed. Again, it was 5,099 votes in favor, which was 61.45. 3,185 against, which was 38.38%, and 14 disallowed. On the basis of the voting results submitted by the tellers, the amendment not having found two-thirds in favor, the amendment is lost. Thank you. Okay, so just like that that amendment failed. So they needed to have two-thirds majority, which they, they were assured they didn't have. So afterwards, right, people were saying, okay, maybe if they had done open ballot, because sometimes they can do a, um, a writing ballot where they can count behind the scenes, you know, like a circuit ballot, or they can do an open ballot where you just raise your ballot and they can skim the room to see, if it's, uh, if it's the majority or if it's not, because that's what they did uh, last time. So, you know, people were saying like, okay, this time around, men would have been so embarrassed to raise, uh, not to raise, to say, to support the amendment, because people are going to be looking like, oh, so you a man who supports women pastors. Oh, you guys support women pastors. Because right? when people are watching, <laughs> people are going to vote differently just because people are watching. But now if your writing is secret, I mean, hey, man, you know, so those are the things. So this was very devastating to see that this uh, amendment has failed. So these women pastors uh, will live to fight another day. So it's unfortunate that something like, can you see the contrast here, right? They voted the Alexandria church because it does have a woman pastor. They kicked it. They kicked that church out. They excommunicated it from the convention. But they, on this side, you have an opportunity to vote, to make it clear, to close all the loopholes, to make sure that the office can only be held by a man. And these people will be like, no, <laughs> we don't want to change anything. <laughs> Talk about the status quo. So you, this, is what, this is what's happening in the SBC. Can you make sense out of that? Mm -hmm. One hand, you're voting to kick a church out because there's a woman pastor. One hand, you don't want to change the rules. That's going to make everything so tight so no woman pastors can come in. <laughs> yeah, so this is what's going on. Uh, on. On the other hand, so right now, I mean, they what? It's communicated four or five churches since last year out of over 1,800, um, almost 2,000 churches in good standing. 